is situations where those tensions clash. Right. So, um, in looking at the role of the defense counsel, when we talked before we began right. the camera, I said, here are three topics right, that right. don't seem to be connected in right. any way. Let's right. see if we can right. find a common thread that runs through them. Uh, this is another tension that, right. we, that I talked about uh, that exists in the world of defense lawyers, uh, and that is the unique relationship with the client and the obligation to protect the client's interests and to advance his or her cause uh, at every turn, um, uh, ethically right. and uh, and uh, with passion. So we have a second topic here. We have the time management right. issue, and right. now there's the the tension that exists in the system. Um, and it exists for good reason. It exists because it is an adversarial system. Right. And if uh, defense counsel does not um, adopt and fulfill that role properly, the system won't function as it should. Right. Uh, and I think from the, the young lawyer's point of view, very often they struggle, at least they, they've told me, uh, they struggle with saying no. Okay. When other officials in the system bring right. okay. pressure right. Right. to sure. bear on them to say well, yes. Well, you concede this, right? Like, yes. like is, is identity an issue or is blah, 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 you know, and maybe that's, you're not going to tip your hand. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, so I, I think what I was getting at there just before we had that exchange was that uh, maybe what I'm identifying in the topics are the tensions right. that come to bear uh, on defense counsel that young lawyers struggle with balancing right. in their daily work and in their daily lives so that when they go home at nine o'clock at night. Huh. Yeah, yeah, great. Eh? Yeah. yeah, you see now if, if anybody watching this who hasn't gone to law school now they won't, right? You know, like, that's right. Oh, uh, that's a bunch of nonsense. I'm going at nine. Who needs that? Yeah. I know. It. Uh, that's where time management. That's comes right. In. That's where time management. Taking Fridays off or, or using time Fridays for time management. Not yeah. taking them off, but but doing the other things that aren't in court. Right? However, however it may work, we're all different. We all work differently. Right. Um, but. Yeah, I think the point I was driving at, you have to find some time, right. hopefully not weekends, because right. weekends can often be uh, taken up with something else in right. practice. Right. Um, but, uh, or, with, or with the other aspects of, of their lives, you know, especially nowadays, right? I mean, people are going to want the work-life balance thing, you know, very much, you know. Yes, I hear that. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Don't tell my wife. Yeah. Today, but yeah, I've heard. I've heard. I've heard some people, the kids today. Wow, you know. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's very valid, and uh, uh, when uh, I started practicing, most criminal lawyers that I was growing up with in the profession were working nine, ten o'clock at night. Sure. Um, and we would find each other usually at the library at the courthouse. Sure. Because that's where we went to I'm, do our research. I'm, I'm just old enough to know that. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> it, it was just a quick law and all that was just coming in when I, when I got called. <laughs> yeah. It, um, uh, any night of the week, if you went to the courthouse at 7 o'clock, you would find some criminal lawyers in the library. Yep. Uh, now, 90% of what we do is online through Quick Law and other services, so the library's probably closed. No, at that no, time. that's right. I mean, and helpfully now we can work 24 hours a day. Uh -huh. um, the, <laughs> that's right. There, there was actually one thing that you raised. You were talking about the role of the advocate and the role of uh, and the code of professional conduct. Um, I know one thing that'll come up, especially in your practice, and and it comes up a great deal in mine as well. Um, and, and this is something that, that maybe younger lawyers probably aren't aware of, but it'd be pretty normal in a technical area, the way, the way you practice, that there'll be divergent authorities, there'll be contrary authority. There'll be Judge A, which is saying black, and Judge B, which is saying white, and Judge C, which is saying somewhere in between. Um, and, and one of those positions 
helps your client a great deal, but you're aware of the other ones, right? You're aware of contrary authority. Um, uh, I think a lot of the senior guys know what the answer to that is, but but some of the junior people, or some people in law school, or, or some of the people in uh, you know their articling, they may not be aware. What, what's the correct response to that? Well, in in my view, um, this is one of those little things that really tests uh, your ability as counsel. Right. Um, you have an ethical obligation to place before the court in legal argument all the law right. that you know. Right. Um, that includes case authorities right. that may not support your position. Yeah. And that then is where the advocate's skill right. uh, heightens.